Hey, this is Shannon with the AMP channel on YouTube. I wanted to do a series of videos documenting the creative process and recording music. And what I really wanted to focus on is that you don't have to be the greatest guitar player and bass player and drummer in the world to be able to create a song um, from start to finish. Um, and let me elaborate a little more on that. I'm a drummer, as you can see, um, with my kit behind me. I play a little bit of guitar. I'm not great at it. Um, uh, actually, I'm not too good at all at guitar or bass. I'm a decent drummer. Uh, but the way technology has changed, I'm able to start a song, create it, and be fully creative on it from the drum part to the guitar part to the bass part, all of it, all the way through, because my technology allows me to do so. So I've never seen this done on U YouTube where someone uh, creates a song and documents how they created it. Um, so this song is the only thing I have to its lyrics. That's it. So I've started with lyrics. Um, none of the music has been written or, or anything. So again, with my limited skill set, I want to see how professional of a song I can create and share my process as I'm doing it in a series of videos. So to get started, um, I figured I'd give you a breakdown of the equipment that I'm using. Um, and you, and you should know that you can do this on a budget, actually. All you really have to have to do this is a computer, um, an audio interface of some kind to plug your uh, equipment into, your microphones, your guitars, etc., um, and, and a DAW program. So I guess we'll start there, and I'll start off showing you the DAW that I'm using, and let me turn around to the screen here. Uh, I'm using Sonar X3. And I'm going to just drag uh, my launch icon for Sonar over to uh, my captured screen so you can see it. Um, actually, it's not X3 anymore. It's actually Sonar Platinum. So we'll put it up here in the corner so I can launch it from up there. One of the other um, things I'm using, as you can see, is already maximized here, is the um, mix control for my Focusrite Sapphire. So I have a Focusrite Sapphire, Liquid Sapphire 56 interface that all of this will be going through. The problem that I'm going to have is syncing up the, the uh, video <laughs> with the audio because I have my audio going through my interface so you can hear the professional quality of audio as we're doing it so you can hear it. Um, but of course I didn't want to use the video camera's audio system. I wanted you to actually be able to get the depth and everything of the audio as we're playing it or as I'm playing it and recording it. Um, so you can see the interface for the Liquid Sapphire up here and I'll give you a, a later on into the videos I'll actually show you the piece of hardware that the Liquid Sapphire 56 is. I have uh, also an M-Audio Profire 2626 connected ADAT to the Liquid Sapphire. So I have 16 inputs, 16 analog inputs. Um, the reason I have so many is because I'm a drummer. I'm using 10 mics on my drums alone. So, you know, uh, I need the extra inputs and outputs, uh, especially if I have uh, people come over and, and play music and want to record some tracks and we want to do it together. Um, I, I need to have the extra inputs to do that. Again, you can do this whole process with uh, a two-input interface, two-in, two-out interface, which you can get fairly cheap. So um, that's that's the whole key to this. And the other thing I wanted to let you know before we get started is any feedback, good or bad, leave it in the comments section. Um, like I said, I'm not the greatest guitarist or bassist in the world. Uh, and I'm not the greatest singer in the world either, but I'm going to do all these parts to this song. And again, the only thing I have for this song are the lyrics. I've written the lyrics already, have not a clue what music I'm going to put with it, just have a kind of an idea. Um, so, back into the breakdown of the equipment. Uh, so the interface is out of the way. The other thing that I've added to my project studio here is a control surface. I have a Behringer. X-Touch, um, great, great addition to the workflow of the studio, and and you're actually going to pick up some technical things here as well because 
Um, I'm going to show you how it interacts with my doll. The doll that I'm using again is Sonar Platinum, so there's not a lot of YouTube videos documenting Sonar Platinum with uh, with the Behringer X Touch. So I'll show you some of the ins and outs and what I've discovered. Uh, what people don't realize about the X Touch is is it's using Mackie. Uh, they do know it's using Mackie Control Protocol, but what they don't realize about that is every doll looks at the Mackie Control Protocol messages differently. So people freaked out because they're like, well, these buttons don't do what they say they're going to do. Well, no, they won't because from doll to doll, it's going to change. So what you really have to do is go in and map out the buttons to, uh, to know what button does what. Once you get that down, you will absolutely love that control surface. The other thing we're going to use is um, a fret light guitar, and I'm not sure if any of you have seen fret light. I'm going to go ahead and drag the icon for the fret light Studio 6 over here. It's an actual guitar that actually has LED lights all across the fretboard, so it will light up um, different scales and different notes that you want to play. So when I decide what chord progression I'm going to use for the rhythm track of, of this song, then I can go back and I can look at many different scales in the same key. Uh, so if I want to look at uh, you know, a blue scale, I can do that. If I want to look at uh, just a, a chromatic scale of some kind, an Ionian, a Dorian, any of the modes, I can decide which scale I want to do for my lead guitar, um, which is, again, going back to the technology and how to make it work. I've been using Sonar St Home Studio or Sonar Cakewalk uh, since Home Studio 7, so I'm going to give you a lot of tips on how to work in, in and out of Sonar. Uh, again, all feedback um, that you can give me, great. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, lastly, uh, I need to mention that all the guitars and basses are going to go through a Pod uh, HD56, a Line 6 Pod HD, HD uh, 500X, sorry. Uh, uh, Pod HD 500X. Um, so we're going to get all of our tones and sounds digitally through that. And I'm going to go ahead and drag that icon over here as well so you can see. So now I've got the screen set up. We're going to launch Sonar and we're going to get into creating this project. Um, and um, again, I can't stress enough, I'm looking for feedback, both positive and negative. And hopefully by the end of this, we come out with a, a great song. So here we go. Alright, quickly before I open up Sonar and get started, I wanted to show you the hardware we're using. Um, I know I went over all of it, but uh, let me give you a video of it. Um, so there's the interface, and I want you to notice that on the interface itself, my guitars are actually going to be plugged in stereo. They're going into channel um, three and, and channel uh, four and you notice that they're up and down here and here and notice that the gain knobs are set practically identical on both of those so that's pretty important I'm doing it as a stereo track that is coming out of this pod HD 500X pedal so I've got my guitar plugged straight in to the Pod HD 500X and then I've got two XLR outs going out of it into the interset interface on channels 3 and 4. Here's my viewing setup, uh, my, my, my screens and my monitors so I can hear and as well as headphones pretty much everywhere. Keyboard if I want to do a keyboard part. Um, you can see I've got headphones hanging everywhere. And then when I get behind the drum kit, and this the kit I'll be playing right there. And we'll also trigger the drums, so there's going to be some pretty cool stuff there as well. So, here we go. Alright, so how we're going to start, we're going to go ahead and open up Sonar Platinum. And you'll notice it comes up to the Sonar's new start screen. Absolutely love it, Sonar. Great job. Cakewalk guys, y'all have done an amazing job with your rolling out fades. Love it. I'm going to choose New Project. Do you notice when I hit that, that the faders moved on the um, 
on the control surface, um, motorized faders so it knows what's going on. And you'll also notice I'm not going to use track two, I'm going to add my own tracks. So when I delete this, the fader will go away, drop back down to zero. The next thing we'll do is we'll rename track one, and let me double click it there. And I'm going to call it intro rhythm. Or I may just call it intro guitar. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. Intro guitar, I'll hit enter. And then we're going to set the tempo of the song. Now, I've already pre-figured out the tempo, so I don't have to walk you through the whole thing. But let me just play, uh, enable the uh, metronome so you can hear it click when I press the play button. Sound on defaults at 120. That's not what I'm going to use, but I want you to hear how fast that is. Not going to work, so I'm going to change it down. And what I've decided is I want it to be at about 84, so I'm going to pull it down to 84. And and you see how that is. So uh, the other thing I'm going to change are the preferences of the click track. I don't like that high ping for the first beat, whether it be a bell or something like that. So let me see what I can find. that ring sound. I could actually do it as a kick. That'll give you the number one on everything. So yeah, let's do that. So now, so now you know where the first beat of every measure is. It's pretty apparent and you can hear it. Okay. So that's set. I've got the track set to intro guitar. I will record enable the track. I already have the Pod HD 500X plugged in and turned on. I'm going to go to the 500X edit software. The patch I'm going to use for the intro guitar is going to be Dream Clean. So what I want to do now is I want to select this track and I want to go into the clip section and I think I've already named it, but no I haven't actually. Clip section of the track, I'm going to put in the description the patch I'm using so if I need to refer back to it later I'll know what I use so it's going to be pod HD 500x dream clean enter and that's done so that's in there um, next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to test the levels of the um, my input levels here uh, to see if I'm getting hot enough levels so I'm going to Turn up the guitar and just strum it. Strum it one, one time. It looks like I'm getting to about a negative 12. I could adjust the gains to get, get it hotter than that, but I think that's plenty hot for what I'm doing with it. Um, and then I can adjust it after the fact anyway. So i um, got plenty hot level. I'm not clipping, uh, and I've got plenty of headroom to work with. So that's perfect. Mm, so everything's set up. It's time to start tracking two ways I can track here. Um, one, I could do loop recording or a punch in uh, and just punch in the section that I want to punch in. For this specific one, I'm not going to do that. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to start recording till the 11th measure. The reason I'm doing that, I want to give myself 10 measures in the front in case I want to add something to the front so I don't have to move everything over it. I've already got space there. When I go down to mastering the song and doing the final mix, I'll take away all the space that's left over from what I don't use on the front so it starts like two measures in, something like that. But for tracking purposes, I'm going to give myself plenty of front end room, so we'll start the tracking at about 11. So let me get the guitar ready and we will start tracking this song. Alright, we're ready to start tracking. I'm going to remember I said I was going to start at about 11, so I'm going to give myself a couple bars to go into it.
can see it. Pull that to 11 1. Pull that to 19 1. And we're going to start over. Do it again. And this will show you what take lanes do. So, there we go. that one. I'm going to get about four takes in. takes in. Now we'll listen back to them and see where we're at with it. Okay, now we're going to select which take we want out of the four takes. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to highlight the bars from 11 to 19. I'm going to set it as a loop point and you see my loop uh, playback came on right there. Move this up to the start of it start sampling the first one. right there so I don't think that one's going to work.
think I'm actually going to use take one. Now I want you to keep in mind that we may not keep that take. I'm probably, uh, I'm not probably, I'm going to use that as a scratch track. Um, so that's going to keep my general timing for my lead guitar, my bass, all that, as well as I'm going to put in placeholder drums for until I uh, record the live drums. But that will work. I've already got it highlighted. It's set up, as you notice when I click on one of these to promote them, it automatically promotes it in the track itself. So I'm going to keep take one and keep it as my promoted track. I'm going to close the take lanes and that's what I'm going to use. Now, here is the moment of truth. Let's take off the loop recording. Let's right click this track, go to copy, click OK, go right here to the start of the 19th bar, go edit and go paste. And you can see that it pasted in an exact replica of that. So now let's listen to the transition between this and the copied and pasted one. crossfades there to give it a little smoother transition but I'm not going to really need to do that because um, again I'm probably not keeping that track after I get everything else recorded I come back and record that again so uh, let's let's do some some uh, uh, let's first let's put in some markers right so I know that this first eight bars is going to be my intro, right? So I'm going to put a marker at the very beginning, or no, actually I'm going to put a marker right here. And this is where I'm going to start my drums. start the right, so that marker will be placed in there and I do this so I can keep up with you know where I'm at and I can count how many bars that I've had into different spots of the song so I know I'm starting my drums there I know I am going to start my lead guitar right there so Next thing I want to do is I want to drag in a drum track as a placeholder. So I'm just going to grab Addictive Drums 2. I'm going to drop it in. And then we're going to choose the drum pattern that we're going to use. So we'll go ahead and open up the Addictive Drums interface. And also just a quick side note. The background noise you've been hearing is my heater. Uh, as you can probably tell, this is in a in a basement room, so uh, it gets a little bit cold down here. So I've actually got it turned off, and that should make a difference on the background noise. Right now, I'm going to leave it at the default kit that it has come up on, and I'm going to go into Beats. And this is really key here. So when I'm creating a song, I I want to hear a beat that goes in my head with the melody or, or the guitar part or the rhythm part that I'm playing. Uh, I've gone through and, and looked at a few different beats and listened to a few. One thing you have to keep in mind when you're dragging beats in, um, try to get it pretty close to the tempo of the song. Now when you do drag it in, say if I drug in this 100 or 227 beat per minute tempo and I'll play you that real quick. It'll still work, but the only way it works is if it's in the same time signature. So it's got to be on a 4-4 time signature. So um, what I found for this song is going to be one that's called Dry Beat 7, Hi-Hat and Tom, for 
the intro and for us for the sake of doing a scratch track. So when I want to move where my now time is, this is where the drums are going to start. So if I just drag this and drop it, it'll put the beat in right there. And I'm going to do one other thing here. I'm going to go to the kit page here. I'm going to load a trigger here. Wrong way. There. I like my kick to have that trigger click to it. So, gives it that heavier. I think I'm going to do the same thing to the snare. I don't want it to be a wood block or a tambourine or a cowbell. Let's go this way. Oh, and I'm going to use the same trigger there. Drag the link over. Bam. Link it to snare one. Gives it that nice crack to it with clickiness. Okay, so that's set. Now let's listen to what our drum beat sounds like when it comes in. so far so what I'm going to do is I will do groove clip looping here I'll loop it out and you notice the timing is pretty much perfect so a good bass and a good start for a song so I know the drums are going to start there I know my lead guitar is going to start right there as well so let's just move the now time to here and let it hear the rest of the Hear the rest of the phrasing. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, so. I know I'm going to add another track now, uh, and this track number three is going to be lead guitar. And I'm just going to leave it at that for now. Uh, go in and we'll set the input of it. It's going to be the same input that my intro guitar was, so it's going to be stereo IP3. And that's set. Okay, just to let you know, um, there's a couple of, of things I'm doing here. Uh, this is not all being done at one sitting. I'm doing this over the process of a weekend, so this is a weekend project for me. Um, so when I went to sleep last night, I thought about this, and you remember how I left the room in the front to add some different things to it? Uh, I'm not going to do the lead guitar yet, but we know where it comes in. But I decided when I timed it out with the lyrics of the song, I was kind of singing it in my head, figuring it out. What I want to do is I want to take and I want to copy this section. And I know it's eight bars long, so I know I want it to butt up against that. So I'm going to go to three here and I'm going to paste it in right there. So see, it goes in exactly. The reason I did that is when I timed it out, kind of singing it to hear how I wanted it to come out. I needed this extra measure of the intro in. Um, so what's going to happen is this whole measure of the intro right here is going to kind of fade in. The vocals are actually going to start at bar 11, and it's just an intro vocal with just the guitar. That's before the drums come in. So um, just to give you a, an idea of, of how that's going to be, so 
All of this is going to start at a very low volume and just fade up through this whole first phrasing. Um, and you'll see what I get to when we get to that point of doing it. And I won't do that yet because I don't want to utilize the resources of the CPU. But when I get to bar 11 here, the first whole phrase uh, of the vocal is going to be kind of acapella with the guitar in the back. Then when the drums start, that's, that's when the lead guitar is going to hit. Um, and there's going to be a whole phrase there of just the lead guitar before I get into the verse. So I just wanted to explain to you how I'm doing that. One more housekeeping thing. I'm going to go ahead and put my marker in where my vocal starts as well while we're at it. So I'm going to insert a marker at 11.1. And I'm going to call it intro vocal acapella. And I'm probably not spelling that right, but don't care. I'll know what it is. It's listed in right there. Alright, so we're ready to start tracking the lead guitar part. And I wanted you to see how I was actually picking out the lead notes to, uh, to the lead I was going to play. So if you notice on the left-hand side of my screen, I have a fret light uh, chord and scale library pulled up. Also, notice on the video, you'll see the fretboard lit up with the LED lights um, for the scale that I'm going to be playing on this song. Right now I have it set to scales, uh, a minor scale, it's going to be an E minor, in position 5. I'm going to switch from position 5, uh, actually I'm going to start it in position 4 and move it up to position 5, so I'll be playing between these two positions, 4 and 5. Alright, so um, and again, I'll start it on 4. That's uh, fret 7 to 10. And 5 is going to be 10 to... Uh, or 5 is going to be uh, 10 to 12. Or 9 to 12. Depending on how you look at it. But um, the tone I've chosen to use is going to be the Pink Floyd tone. As you can see right there. It's got kind of a crunchy but a singy lead tone to it. So... Let's open up Sonar or maximize Sonar. Notice where I've got my marker. I know exactly where I'm going to start the lead guitar. Let's go. Thank you. 
video editing, I've done several, several different takes. As you can see on my take lanes here, 44 total takes. Um, you don't see them all here, over here, because I cut and uh, split the tracks to do different things. I actually even changed the, uh, the progression of the lead guitar on that part. Uh, but I did it by uh, selecting tracks and splitting them in certain locations. And I'll show you why I did that after I let you uh, get a listen to it real quick. I copied and pasted a lot together. And like I say, I didn't even use the, uh, the original uh, recordings that I had done. But take a listen real quick. going on here and, and I'll kind of break down for you what I had done. You remember we had set the loop point and the record punch in punch out point to get this whole phrasing done here. Um, so what I ended up doing is I ended up um, changing things up a bit. I kept the loop but I did all these recordings and then after I got finished recording them I split them because each take I played a little different. Um, I didn't play the exact same phrasing because I wanted to hear what different phrasings sounded like. When you do that, you can't just do a normal uh, split of all tracks because as you see, they won't line up. Um, this first phrasing actually did line up so I was able to split all the tracks right there. But when I come over to this second phrasing, I actually had to pull out and split them all separately. You see how this one's longer than this one? The, one that I, the ones I ended up going with and using are the ones that are highlighted in green. Um, and it's pretty easy to do, so when you want to promote one of these after you have them split, I guess let me show you how to split them first, just in case you guys don't know. So you put your now time where you want to split the track at. You highlight which track you want to split. Uh, for instance, I want to show six here. You right click right where that highlight's at, and when you right click, you go down to split and you click split and it'll split the track for you. And then you do it on the other side as well. So, uh, but anyway, so I went through and I surgically split all of those. Um, as you can see this right here is a little tricky. This phrasing here did not match up perfectly with this. So I actually put in a crossfade right there and you really can't hear it. It kind of smoothed it out pretty good. So, after I split all the tracks, you notice if you put your cursor on the track, it, it shows this little icon with the four blocks on it. If you click that track now, it'll and I'll go ahead and do it just to show you, it'll promote that to the main take, which is right here. Remember, I'm going to keep this record 33 as that part, but say, for instance, I wanted this record 10 there. I just click it, and it automatically promoted it, right? So... Uh, as you can see, so I'm gonna go back to the record 33 and promote it back up there. But there you go. So you have um, the intro lead is 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 pretty well in, and and we might go back and tweak it a little bit at the end. But uh, that's pretty good for my taste for right now. It keeps me in the flow of the song. So I'll go ahead and close up these take lanes, and what we're left with is the take with the parts together as you can see that's pretty much going to do it for this first video this is going to be a series of videos uh, probably four is what I'm looking at doing uh, one thing we want to do housekeeping before we go the guitar track I ended up not going with that Pink Floyd tone I ended up going with um, a tread plate with a delay that was the name of the patch and uh, 
and the, the pot H2. So we'll go ahead and label that real quick. So that's labeled up over here, as you can see. Um, so in part two of this series, we're going to get into recording um, some of the vocals. We're also going to go into the first verse of the song and the chorus as well. Um, the song is progressively going to build and get heavier and heavier. Um, when we get to the chorus, the chorus is going to have a lot of distorted uh, guitars, um, and I'm going to double track them. Um, so when you're playing more of those crunchy, uh, distorted tones, a lot of times um, to get the thickness and the body out of it so they don't just drop off and get lost in the mix, uh, a good technique is to double track. So then we're going to do that on that part of the song. So hope to see you at this, in the next, uh, next video in this series. And uh, till then, take care. the field.